Happy Sunday evening, everybody, and welcome into the Trade of Black podcast. I'm your host, Shad Dales. What a week it was. The industry was hot all week. Why? A lot of sediments are basically building in Washington right now with rumors swirling everywhere. We haven't received this much attention in this industry, I think, ever over the last couple of weeks, which is why this industry is catching a bid right now. So it's interesting times. It's exciting times. But Let's make sense of what happened in Washington this week. That is the focus in tonight's podcast. So let's get to it and welcome in TDR co-host Anthony Farrell. Good to see you. Happy you Sunday evening. And um, yeah, like we've said all week long, like this industry has caught a bid. Uh, all is well as far as the interest level, but uh, you catching know. a bid, c- c- catching a bid is an understatement. I mean, can't yeah, be closed exactly. up seventy percent on uh, on Friday? I mean, a lot of people are scratching their heads. I think it was a short squeeze and excise tax related um, doesn't detract from the MSOs, doesn't give the Canadian LPs any more of a, <clears throat> any more of a staying power um, in it. I mean, I think it's just market dynamics and MSOs will get their time. I mean, if it is excise tax related, MSOs are going to have major tax reform via Schedule 3 and 280E dropping. So, I mean, yeah, the board's setting up nicely. Um, I saw a lot of people get... Uh, kind of like they, they were pissed off because the LPs were running and the MSOs were kind of flat. Like there's going to be days like that. That's not a condemnation on either side. Um, it's it, it's going to happen how it, how it happens. Yeah. Well, one thing I noticed this week, it wasn't one way or the other. It was like one day you had the American companies, as you said, running. Canadian was the next day. It was back and forth. But yeah. uh, one thing like you've said from quite some time, and many people believe this, that uh, senior exchanges, that is the benefit, as we've said all along, that any news pertaining to Washington and who do you see moving more than anyone? And what was the daily volume, I think, for Canopy and Tilray on Friday alone? Uh, was- I think Canopy <clears throat> traded close to a quarter bill, uh, cl- close to a quarter billion dollars worth of stock. Um, I'm pretty sure they almost traded their entire float um, for the day. I mean, it was it was crazy. Gives you an um, idea. The LPs, the LPs were were, were machines um, on Friday. You ever fantasize about some of these MSOs the day they get on the Nasdaq? I mean, were- but everybody, everybody's forgetting. Last Friday, Cure Relief was up thirty percent going yeah. into the close. Yeah, like thirty percent. Like yeah. Canopy's gotten beat to shit. It's still trading under a dollar. Good point. Good free, point. That's free, the reason why it moved. Split. Before the split, Canopy would be trading at seventy cents um, right now, give or take. Yeah. Uh, like, and, and Cureleaf, Cureleaf had action. I mean, the stocks will, like I said, it's not a condemnation. It's not a put, it's not a tug of war. One doesn't have to move for the other one to not move. It's, it's just market dynamics and liquidity yeah. um, playing out. And the, sh- and the, the Canadian LPs have been shorted to shit. Um, I mean, they've got, they've had massive short positions on them for some time now. Yeah. And it goes to show like what happened in September. Probably we'll see the yeah. same thing. The stocks have been hit hard. Obviously, biggest rebound. But why are they rebounding? There's a lot of sentiment building in Washington, as I said off the top. Uh, we had two weeks ago the State of the Union address of President Biden, the roundtable discussion last week with Vice President Kamala Harris. And this week, no shortage of spectacular in any direction you can think of as to what happened in Washington. And to find out what happened in the hallways and what the sentiment was, let's bring back cannabis lobbyist and a friend of the podcast here at TDR, Mr. Don Murphy. Good to see you. On a Sunday evening, I know it was a busy week for you. So thanks for checking in. Wow, what a week in Washington! What, like I cannot believe the amount of tension. It's like we're finally getting our day in the sun, right? Well, it seems like it. Um, so yeah, we had the State of the Union. We had the the Harris Roundtable. Yep. This week we had the HHS Secretary um uh, Becerra in front of actually three committees it's usually just you know one in the house and one in the senate but uh on thursday he was in front of uh, the house appropriations and ways and means and there were little tidbits in each one of those that i took away uh with the notion that uh schedule three will happen sooner rather than later no it didn't happen on friday is was yeah. one, one of my best case scenarios right it's just so you all know uh, Congress is out for two weeks now, and yeah. they just sort of finished up the whole budget. So there will be no shutdown. Yeah. And they can move on to other things like, hey, passing safer, safe or safer banking, uh, which would be nice. But I uh, was hoping maybe the uh, DEA would come out and acknowledge their uh, recommendation on Friday. 
That would uh, be great. Because I do think they want to sort of bury this because the left is pretty upset. I know they've been upset for a long time. And all that culminated with um, uh, Congressman Earl Blumenauer dressing yeah. down Becerra in the Ways and Means Committee on Thursday afternoon. And you yeah. run the run the tape of that. And, and Sab did a really, really, Sab, <laughs> Sabatino did a really, really. I watched that a couple yeah. of times and I shared that with a member of Congress who started laughing during a hearing. I have a feeling he was watching it during the hearing when he probably should have been. Uh, I, I need to I need to tell people, hey, if you're going to watch this, do it like in your office with the door closed because uh, you'll. So 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 there's there's a lot to unpack there. Um, obviously, we're going to dig into probably all those issues, but I wanted to kind of start with safe. As yesterday, there was something that caught everybody off guard, where Chuck Schumer, everybody's good friend Chuck, launched a fundraising campaign online with safe as kind of the main purpose, I guess, behind it what's the rhetoric like what like, what's the like what's going on there is he tone deaf is he trying to use it as a barometer to see truly how much interest or how much people care or like what's the rhyme and reason there because i filled out the survey i didn't donate but i did fill out the survey and i know a lot of people did hmm. um in the cannabis space yeah I, I will say this chuck schumer knows his base voters and the base voters of the democrat party way more than i do way better than yeah. i do i don't understand that whole idea I mean, yeah, maybe he's trying to raise money, but I'm going to believe I got to believe that 99.9 percent of progressive Democrats have never heard of safe banking, don't know what it is and don't even know how it you know, affects them. So uh, unless he was trying to raise money from the industry, fine. I understand yeah. that. But but don't do it online. It, it didn't seem to make any sense no. to me. So I'm curious what the results are. Uh, but other than that, I, I just found it suddenly raised to the level of politics. Right. I haven't seen that up to this point. I really haven't. And that's one of the reasons I think safe banking can pass because Democrats kind of want it. Republicans kind of want it. They don't want to say they care that much. They don't not want it. Uh, even those who are opposed to everything we're working on, uh, they understand the need for it. Plus, if you're a senator in, say, Kansas, you want to do right by bankers in general, you're going to yeah. vote for safe, safe. Does Janet? Does, does, does we also saw Janet Yellen come out yeah. again um, <clears throat> in support of safe? Her being the tre uh, se secretary of the treasury, does that carry any weight here, or is kind of it just it's a nice to have? It's, um, it's certainly her, a nice to have because it, it it brings it up. We're talking about it, right? It puts yeah. it not on the front burner, not necessarily even on a burner, but it does get some ink. Uh, yep. I don't think I don't think it causes Republicans to suddenly say, oh, now I got to be for safe banking yeah. because yeah. The, uh, the, the Treasury Secretary, Biden's administration. That's what I've said when Biden's uh, FDA or HHS secretary comes out for Schedule three, Republicans don't go, oh, now I got to be for it. They just don't. If Trump's secretary of HHS said it, that that would you know, that would change some some votes for for sure. You made a point about Schumer's party. 95% do not know really much about this industry, even to begin with. When we go to Washington, like how many people do you think understand that this industry employs around 500,000 jobs? If rescheduling were to happen, another 100,000 jobs and that the industry right now is uh, expected to grow to $40 billion this year alone. Like, do people understand this at all from Washington or are they still really fixated on the just say no era? Well, it depends on who you are. I mean, if yeah. you're if you're a senator in a in a legal state, you probably do know or you should know. If they don't know, and I once said this about a member, somebody said, "Does so and so know how many businesses are in her district?" And I said, "If she doesn't know, it's not her fault. It's your mm -hmm. fault." Mm -hmm. uh, I pushed back on the the Republican Banking Committee online the other day. They posted that they were trying to do something to fix the housing crisis, and I said. Well, if you want to do something to fix homelessness, uh, 400,000 employees in the cannabis industry would respectfully request that you pass yeah. safe banking because right now their income doesn't qualify them for a mortgage. What was the so response? So unless you do that, your rhetoric doesn't ma your record doesn't match your rhetoric. And I had some some conversations with some members about that and you mm. know they're starting to understand that cannabis banking is about more than just bankers and MSO uh, big shots getting richer. It's about the, the frontline person 
who might not have a job otherwise because maybe they have a yeah. record for you know uh, uh, possession or sales or something like that. These are folks that maybe don't necessarily have access to regular employment. I, uh, left wing I think, entrepreneurs and employees within this industry absolutely want safe banking to pass. Yeah. That that's the crazy thing is that it's it's a bipartisan support amongst who's all involved is with regards to the industry because one it creates jobs and two like as far as social equity I, I think if they could get the proper loaning and banking um, it would help out tremendously which who wouldn't want that as far as a business owner right yeah but let's let's be honest those folks don't have much of a voice on Capitol Hill they don't I mean, really, at all they just they don't. Mm -hmm. I mean, they have me. I know. <laughs> they have me, but all... honestly, I'm not even working for the industry, right? I'm I'm more on the patient side. I care about this from the patient's perspective. I got you. I don't think you know. I think they should be able to buy their medicine from a reputable place, place where they know what they're getting on a regular, consistent basis, and not have to pay cash. Like you know, right. uh, you know, treat them like the patients that they really are. Well, right. you said they don't have a voice, but one person that does have a voice is Congressman Earl Blumenauer, who, wow, yeah. blew the doors off of everybody in Washington this week. And I think in a lot of ways, did you see a little bit of yourself in him when he was speaking? Because I got to tell you, like that was like stand up and applaud on behalf of everybody that falls this industry, don't you think? Well, it's funny that 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 outburst by him is a long time coming. And yep. I will tell you, I had a conversation with him in a room full of activists, mostly lefty a a activists who were very happy that Democrats took over the House in 2000, in 2018. So yep. that, that election, by 2019, in the spring of 2019, we're all in a room together and everybody's just, you know, oh, this is great, great. And I finally said, maybe it was, who knows, maybe it was fall, it was at some point, I'm like, at what point do we start to get annoyed that our legislation is not moving in the Democrat controlled house? Because the Moore Act took a long time to even <clears throat> get uh, submitted, and then it took an even longer time to get passed. The Moore Act did not come up for a vote until the lame duck session of that congressional term. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know, to Blumenau, who's been doing this for decades, like he started on cannabis uh, reform in the 70s. He's retiring. He sees this as his last opportunity to do something meaningful at the federal level. And he's sort of exasperated. He's going out the door and it was this one last shot yeah. in public to make a statement. And he did. It is funny because I was literally sitting right behind his staffer and I leaned in and I said, so... <laughs> how how hard is Earl going to go on the secretary? And she says, well, we'll find out. Yeah. And it was over. I said, it would be inappropriate to applaud, wouldn't it? She goes, yeah, it would. I said, all right, I'm going to go chase him down all. So anyway, he walked out the door right after that. And Did I he? followed him. We had a nice little chat. So, oh, I mean, oh, so I mean, but Sarah you gave us another soundbite this week that kind of gave everybody, I don't want to say cause for concern, but just a lot of question marks when he didn't even know if cannabis or he acted like he didn't even know that cannabis was schedule five or schedule one. Granted, after watching it and listening to it, he knew that it was the most stringent schedule. <clears throat> he just didn't happen to know which end of the spectrum it was. Are people reading too much into that? Or is that just another folly? Like when Kamala came out with a map that didn't even have legal jurisdictions um, on it, like, do they actually know what they're doing and are they com <laughs> and, 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 and are they competent enough to really get this passed because they're really kind of screwing up right they are champions of what we want to get done ultimately but it seems like there's just ineptitudes at every turn almost um yeah with, with, with what they're doing yeah that was that was a jaw dropper uh I do think he knows he may have just been a little confused at the time, uh, you know, which direction uh, it was, you know, his five the worst. <clears throat> but what bothered me was he, he said marijuana is like the most potent and it's not that it's the most potent. It's on a schedule one because it had, it's deemed to have no medicinal value. Yeah. Now the, the, the FDA and HHS has all sort of said, Oh yes, it does. So, 
I think Anthony, one at one point, you one one show, you made a point about how like you can't you can't walk back those two hundred and fifty pages. No, you know, right. and I, I I said those are the new Exhibit A in every court case against every patient uh, that yeah. the FDA and HHS now says yes. But Becerra really, you know, he doesn't get in the weeds, if you will, about all this. This is not his level of you know information. He should probably have some. A, a, a FDA person sitting there with him to answer those questions. Yeah. Which, which is funny. I, I was certain it was coming because I'm sitting in that room and the last guy to speak is Chuck Edwards, who is a prohibitionist of the, yeah, of yeah. the highest order. He comes from North Carolina. He's a damn hypocrite. Uh, uh, the tobacco capital of the whole entire world is North yeah. Carolina. Everybody knows it. And more people have died from cigarettes than will ever die of, of cannabis. And yet here he is. Uh, suggesting that marijuana should, you know, patients should be um, arrested. It's just Don, it's horrible. Don, do you, do you get a chance to speak to like, say, Secretary Becerra before he actually attends a lot of these hearings to like kind of guide him, give him advice, give him direction? Like, do they listen to you? Do they like, what's some of the conversations that you feed with him? Well, feed the him? answer is yes, but it's also no. Like, yes, I was, I was there early uh, in advance and, and, uh, suggested actually i talked to him before i talked to him after because this was now uh that morning the second time he appeared before a hearing he was in the senate the day before he did not bring up schedule three in his opening remarks which sort of right. bothers me right mm. because it's like wait a second yes. this is like the to me this is the biggest thing you're doing you're going to get hammered by republicans on the border all the things that are happening on the border, you should do something, say something, because I think the White House now sees the political benefit of doing something on cannabis. So lead with it. The reason Blumenauer blew up is because for the third time, Becerra went before a committee in his opening remarks, didn't say anything. After the second time, I said, hey, <laughs> you might want to mention Schedule 3 in your opening statement because... It's so popular. It is the most popular thing yeah. on social media at the State of the Union address. Yeah, you're right. Why are you not? Now, let, let's be honest. What percentage of the entire voting population is watching any of these hearings on C-SPAN? Basically zero. Right. So maybe, you know, they're smarter than I am when it comes to that. But your your audience at that point isn't C-SPAN, isn't all the voters. It's those members of Congress who are sitting there. It's the Earl Blumenauers who are tired of inaction. And he just unloaded. Uh, and, you know, now, does anybody know that he unloaded? Does the Progressive Caucus know he unloaded? No, because I talked to the chair of the Progressive Caucus the next day and said, hey, did you see what Blumenauer did? And she had no know. idea. Um, Liz Warren had no idea. And I told her, I said, you guys need to watch this. This is four minutes of Blumenauer unloading. Uh, I think I think DEA has to do something sooner rather than later. And um, yeah. so know, that take, was that was that was Exhibit A as to why. Let's take some of our viewers into the hallways with us in a couple of weeks. What do you think are some key questions that you think we should be asking? You know, Elizabeth Warren or Dave Joyce or Steve Daines or Earl Blumenauer. Like, what do you think? Uh, if if the audience was with us, what's the best way to approach these people on crafting together questions to most importantly, give people, I guess, a better understanding as to like where this currently sits and more importantly, where it's going? Well, first of all, the fact that you're there asking any questions is going to be very helpful. So it doesn't even matter what question you ask, just as long as you're there uh, elevating the issue yeah. to something more like. I know I sent you guys pictures of the scrum, right? It's a dozen members of the press, the media, uh, CNN's there, NBC, mm -hmm. all the network is there. They're all talking about the same thing. It's the border. It's whatever Trump said. It's whatever, you know, is going on with the budget. It's never cannabis. So the fact that you would ask anything about cannabis and because you're going to mostly be talking to people who are friendly, you're going to say, I would say to them, hey, thanks for all you're doing. But what's taking so long? When can we expect Elizabeth Warren led led this effort to, to ask the DEA, what are you doing? Like, what kind of feedback are you getting? Um, and, and I think that will be that'll be good for you, good for your viewers and, and yeah. good for the causes all at the same time.
So, I mean, Elizabeth Warren, I mean, mm. she's a, I've got my differences with her on certain things that she stands for, but I mean, she's a heavyweight, like she's yeah. a seasoned politician. Is she as loud off camera and behind the scenes in Washington as she is on camera when she's talking about cannabis? Or is she just using this as like a political lever when she's in the limelight, like on Jimmy Kimmel or on uh, on one of the on one of these shows? Yeah. Here's the thing. She doesn't need it as a political lever no. or anything like yeah. she's going to win re-election anyway. Yeah. So, yeah. so let me just start with that. So anything she says is more for policy than politics. I'll give her, you know, I'll give her that. But yeah. look, she wrote the letter. You know, so, yeah, behind the scenes, she's doing more than just giving us lip service. Mm -hmm. And then you said one thing that resonated with me in the beginning, that you're you're not really representing the industry in Washington. You're more so representing the patients. How from a public perception, <clears throat> how many of these politicians are actually see cannabis and they think recreational drug versus actually helping people and something that's an alternative to pharmaceuticals and something that actually is patient driven, because I'm assuming that bifurcation is pretty hard for them to come by um, when they're well, seeing it's, cannabis it, it, at it, face it, value. Yeah. It depends on who I'm talking to. Look, medical cannabis is so 1990s, right? That is kind of old yeah. news. Although oddly, that's where we are with HHS and the DEA. Yeah. It's only medical. And I say only like, that's a big deal for the benefit of patients, but it is not full-blown legalization. And that does bother me that, that the president gets on the, the world stage and the State of the Union and infers that what he's doing keeps people out of jail. It keeps some people out of jail. It might keep patients yeah. out of jail, but it yeah. doesn't keep his base out of jail, the larger no. <laughs> population uh, that he's, he's leaning to. Um, but... You know, right now, there are there are a large percentage of, of members who understand that this is now legal in their states. They want to fix it. They if you're on the Democrat side, you know, your base has got to be 95 percent in favor. And yeah. so you want to you want to do something. The problem is for Democrats, they don't want to push harder than the president is willing to go. They really don't want to make Biden look bad because they don't want Trump to be president. So anything they do to move an issue, whether it be the border, look, that's where Fetterman is really an interesting guy. He's yeah. saying what he believes for the benefit of his constituents. He doesn't care what what happens to Biden in the meantime, I think, uh, yeah. or he's not. You know, that is not his first concern for most members of Congress on either side. Republicans do. They care about Trump yeah. as much as they care about, you know, issues. Uh, and that's unfortunate, but you know, that's the world we live in. When you saw Blumenauer speak, um, you said that you, uh, met up with him in the hallway afterwards. What was the sentiment like, you know, after that hearing, um, uh, based on what he said, yes, you had mentioned that the next day people like Elizabeth Warren was not aware, but for those that were in that room and did hear, are they starting to wake up knowing the amount of attention? that this space has received in the past two weeks from, like we said, the vice president and president? Uh, I, I think that is starting to, well, the, the administration is starting to catch up, right? Yeah. Like members, it's Democrats, just, they have to like look behind them to see where the president is on cannabis policy because it's not, they are not ahead of, the administration mm -hmm. is not ahead of where members are or certainly the public is. Um, I will say this. It was very, he, he was very sort of sober about what had happened. It was almost like he went, oh shit, you know, there's no stopping. There's no, there's no going back now, right? Yeah. He really took a stick to the but president. God bless him. He spoke from the heart and he nailed it. Yeah. 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 I, I Ken, heard it. Ken I've Joe, heard him talk I mean, like that before, but not, not in public like that and not to the administration the way he did. I mean, point. I mean, we, we say that we say that cannabis is not really that big of a deal in the grand scheme of things. Obviously, there's the border. There's tons yeah. of other issues that are coming up. <clears throat> Can Joe Biden and the De or whoever might be running from a Democrat as the Democratic candidate? Can they afford not to do anything on cannabis at this not, point? Not now. No, no, no not now. That's, they, okay. they've, they've shown their hand. 
and said, this is yeah. what we're doing. <clears throat> if it doesn't get done, uh, I don't know how they're going to explain we that. Talk, we yeah. talked about this week. The upside is, I don't want to say minimal, but there is an upside to it. But the downside of not getting anything done is uh, could be very, very, well, very bad. Look at the, like, as you said, I think it was almost five to one or 10 to one, uh, the amount of impressions and reactions that cannabis on Twitter received out of any other topic after the State of the Union address, which to me, yeah. it just blows my mind away. Like, yes, the grand scheme of things, to your point, Anthony, it seems small, but is it? <laughs> There's a lot of people that judging by, you know, the reactions of some of the topics that were discussed, especially during the State of the Union address, that it's not a small issue. It is a big issue and it's, it's a popular one. I mean, it, 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 it really, I mean, we don't talk about it a lot and I mean, it doesn't get brought up a lot, but I mean, cannabis, it's, it's not about smoking weed. It's about having choice. Like someone should have the fundamental right to choose if they want to smoke cannabis, ingest cannabis, consume cannabis um, without the government getting in the way and telling them this is illegal when it doesn't kill, it doesn't kill people and it has medicinal properties. I mean, it's really about choice. Like, yeah, that's what it's that that's what it stems down to. Well, <clears throat> speaking of choice, I find it interesting that the party that is literally going to run on abortion again. Correct. Um, you know, my body, my choice somehow, like when it comes to cannabis. Oh, but no, you know, we can't Correct. do that. Um, I think how the does great that make any sense at all. I have no idea. No idea. First step, first step is for us to get to Washington. I think the next step after that is that we go and visit and interview some of these people that have been in prison for a long period of time and just to hear their stories because you know it's pretty asinine to think that I yeah can't... i think it's sad about those people is the stories are mostly bullshit it's mostly i had an ounce of weed on me i got caught two or three times um non-violent offender and now i'm in here for a couple decades um it's a lot of that it's mind-blowing yeah. don back to, back, to, back to earl real quick the one thing that i think was sort of lost is he actually got into politics while he was in this hearing, right? He talked about all the millions of people who support this issue. And if I wanted to get the votes of young people, you know, I, yes, yes. You know, he, he, he probably yeah. crossed the line there. The hundred percent. I'm surprised he said that, but I'm like, man, he sounds like almost like the Dems uh, campaign manager. Like if I'm yeah. wanting to win re-election, you may want to go after the young vote, but I'm like, there it is right there. Yeah. And those, he said those, it. Those were things that probably should not have been said in a hearing. I'm glad he said them. Yes. Uh, but he probably shouldn't have said them. And, uh, you know, but he called him out. And again, I'm not going to tell the Biden administration or the Biden campaign how to best win re-election. But, as yeah. we were sort of talking about earlier, if he does nothing, if he does something, he gets the votes he's going to get anyway. They're kind of yeah, baked yeah. in, right? To use that term and everybody loves when I use that term. But if he does nothing and and says he did something and he gets caught, uh, he's going to, there are going to be people stay home. They're going to say, we're done with you. Um, and I see it on Twitter too. Yeah. Uh, the same thing, you know, no, no safe, no vote, no, no schedule three, no vote. I no would gladly. So seeing what I saw yesterday from Chuck, if Chuck got safe banking done, I would have gladly donated to his, to, to, to his campaign. Um, I know a lot of people would because the general sentiment was, well, this is great, Chuck. We would actually like to donate to you, but you haven't done anything really in, re in regards to this cause. Um, give us a reason to, and give us action. And we gladly donate towards your cause uh, yeah. with, with, with hard dollars. Or, or right now I'm down 50% of my portfolio when I, when I'm in the, when I'm in the black, yeah. uh, fine, but I'm in the red. I can't help you. Uh, you know, we'll see you next yeah. time. Yeah. Mm. Last thing I'll leave you with this. How long have you been lobbying in this industry for now? Uh, since technically since 2002. Wow. 22 years. If you if you add if you add the years in the legislature that have been working on this, that would be since 1999. All right. Okay. So it's 2024, Don. Does <laughs> this feel different? Does it feel like something is? I know we've asked this a question, but is this it? Is this finally feel like we've arrived and like this is different and we're going to see change? It 
It does, but I'll tell you, it's not really like the high water mark for me, right? Okay. It's, <laughs> this is not the grand finale, and then okay, we pass no. schedule three. I mean, schedule three to me is so much bigger and better than safe banking. I mean, safe banking is a first down for me, right? Mm -hmm. It's incrementalism, and it. I mean, yes, it does help uh, all those in industry employees get uh, mortgages, and so I'm not disputing that at all. But in the grand scheme of things, it's not where I want to end up. Where I want to end up is federal legalization. But 99% right. of people that get arrested are at the state level. So I've seen Colorado, Washington State, those victories were so much bigger to me than anything else that's that's happened uh, at the federal level. And, and that's really the way it is for most people. Like This industry wouldn't exist without those state level victories. And I've been working around the country in places that didn't have medical. They have medical now. They have adult use now. There are a lot of people not going to jail because of what the Marijuana Policy Project and other advocates have done over the years. And so, and look, a lot of folks are taking advantage of that. I wish they would, you know, put up a little, um, uh, a little bit of support for those who were still pulling the wagon. But um, anyway, I'll just leave it at that. Well, Listen, appreciate obviously all the uh, work that you do and uh, getting a better understanding of what your end goal is. But uh, more importantly, um, we're really looking forward to attending Washington with you in a couple of weeks. I think that's going to be extremely exciting, um, but always good to hear from you from the hallways of Capitol Hill and just to see and hear what's going on. So again, as we said to all of our viewers, feel free to reach out, leave some comments below, smash that like button and leave comments because we need to ask questions on your behalf when we're in Washington. So whatever questions that you want, leave comments below. Uh, thanks for joining us. Let's keep in touch. T minus two and a half weeks before we're there. So this will be exciting, but I appreciate your time. And uh, we'll talk to you uh, again later this week. Okay. Thank you, gentlemen. Looking forward to it. All right. Thank thanks, you, sir. John.